The Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, verse 2, states that spiritual knowledge is easy to practice, yet growth seems to take great effort. How do we explain this contradiction? Easy in this context is relative. So relative to what? What he's saying is that every human being has a conscience, which we call the voice of the subtle intellect. So let's just take a step back and explore that a little bit. Gross intellect is that which discriminates between all the pairs of opposites which make up the terrestrial world. War, peace, good, bad, black, white, poverty, wealth, etc. The subtle intellect has the same basic function, which is, which is discrimination, but it only has one area of discrimination. It is either the world, the terrestrial, and all of its different aspects, or not the world, what we call the transcendental. This is the only area of discrimination that it has. That's what the subtle intellect does. So the other, the other thing that we've called the transcendental, of course, is the self. So we understand the self to be devoid of ego. So any time that we are going towards the self, we're going towards that which is less egocentric. So the subtle intellect recognizes this difference between self and world. And the voice of the subtle intellect is that part of our personality which says to us, don't go into the world, go towards the self. So even in a terrorist, a, a murderer, whatever, the conscience in that person is saying, don't do it. But because of the presence of the mind and its turbulent desires, you can't hear it. But what's actually happening, what we need to understand is that when we go into the world, we're going against the voice of the subtle intellect. We're going against our own conscience. And so we're actually resisting our nature. In a sense, we're going upstream. We're going into the wind. It's more difficult because we're going against our nature in that regard. The moment we turn the attention inwards and start to direct our activities towards the self, what we'll find is that the conscience supports that activity. That subtlest aspect of our personality supports that activity. And so it's like a tailwind. Now, when we're going against the conscience, we're not always going to be aware of it. We're not, we're not going to consciously necessarily feel the resistance. In the same way that if you're in a car and you're driving into the wind, you're not going to necessarily notice the resistance caused by the headwind. The only thing that will happen is it will consume more of your fuel. Whereas if you had a tailwind, it will consume less of your fuel. Again, you may not necessarily notice it. But the idea is that where there is a tailwind, it's an easier thing to practice because our nature supports it. Our higher nature supports the activity. So when he says very easy to practice relative to going against the conscience, anytime we are functioning in a way which is selfish, i.e. against the conscience, it drains us of our energy. And again, it's not necessarily going to be the case that we're going to know that that's happening. We won't necessarily be able to link the cause and effect. I'm so tired this morning. Uh, I must have been, I ate too much pizza last night or whatever, you know. We will feel a certain way, but won't necessarily understand the underlying cause. But the, the fact remains that selfishness drains us and makes us fatigued. The moment we start acting unselfishly or selflessly, we... As, as it were, release energy of the personality and we get more energy to, to function. This is what he means by very easy to practice relative to continually pursuing the world and walking into that headwind. Turn around, get the tailwind. Because the conscience is always blowing towards the self. All we've got to do is turn around and walk with the wind.